Welcome to Undiet Your Coaching Podcast. I'm Stephanie Dodier, clinical nutritionist and creator of the Going to Be on the Food Method. And I'm on a mission to help all coaches undiet their life and their coaching business. Ready? Let's do this. Hello, my dear colleagues. Welcome back to the podcast. I hope you're doing well. Today, I want to help you with a topic that you're likely thinking about a lot, which is how to improve your clients' results in your program and in your coaching package with them. And if you're not asking yourself this question, this is a good cue for you to start thinking about that. Because fact is, if you want to increase your sales of your program, of your coaching package, the fastest way to improve the sell through is to get people results because they will share how amazing your program is, how powerful your coaching is to other people. And that is how we create success in our business is by creating success with our client. Now, most of us, when we think about how do I help my client create more success in their transformation, we are thinking about them instead of thinking about us. And it's a very common error because we think that we can control other people's results, other people's behavior. We can control our client's result. But the truth is we can't. The only person who can control their result is the client. Just like me, I don't control the result my clients are getting through my mentorship program. I can only become a better coach, a better teacher, and share the information, coach them through the techniques that I'm teaching in a most efficient way so they are more likely to create results in their own life. I can control their results. They control their results. My job is to be more efficient in teaching and coaching. So how do we create more result in our client? By becoming better at creating results in our own life. You have to study yourself. How you currently, how do I create success in my own life? Step by step, understand how you create success and then teach that to other people, to your client. When they're struggling, teach them, coach them through how you pull yourself out of struggle and head towards success. So the best way to increase your client's results in your program, in your coaching, is for you to get more success in your own life. And when you start studying how you're creating success in your life, you will realize very quickly that what gets in the way of your own success is yourself, your own human brain, your own human behavior, what I call the human experience, right? That you think about self-sabotage, right? What the heck is self-sabotage? Self-sabotage is not a disease, (laughs) contrary to what people believe. It's not something that happened to you. It's something that you create. You have to understand how you are moving yourself through self-sabotage. Now, most of us have learned through the oppressive culture to push ourselves through self-sabotage with discipline and willpower. And that is diet culture's way. That's the oppressive way of moving through an actual protective mechanism that is self-sabotage. Self-sabotage is self-protection, right? How do we overcome self-sabotage? By creating safety for ourselves, by listening to our brain and our body being afraid and creating safety so we can then recreate the desire to keep moving forward by creating safety, not by quote-unquote pushing ourselves with more willpower and discipline. How do you create consistency, right? Because when we create result in anything, that it is with food, with body image, with business, the truth is we need consistency, right? We don't change our food behavior in one experience. 
We have to be consistently showing up to our eating behavior with an intuitive eating approach hundreds of time. So how do we create that consistency in taking action and showing up? What gets in the way most of the time of consistency is emotional overwhelm. How do you process your emotion? What is your technique, your tool, your way of processing your emotion when you become overwhelmed and you stop taking action? Teach that to your client. Resilience. Because the truth is, in any transformation, shit is going to get hard. It's supposed to be hard. It's not supposed to be easy. How are you going to help your client when it gets hard? With a big capital letter, hard. How do you move yourself through hard? And if you don't know how how you move yourself because you get stuck every time it gets hard, you're likely not going to be able to coach your client when shit gets hard. And this is what's going to, this is what currently prevents them from getting success. And it's too hard. And they don't know how to think about hard differently. In order for your client to get more success in your program and changing their behavior, right? It will require you knowing how you create and change your behavior, create more success in your life, and then pass that on to your client. That's what I'm going to be teaching inside the non-diet coach lab. This is happening starting September 9th, 2022. So if you're, when I ask you, like, how do you move yourself through self-sabotage? How do you create consistency? How do you move through shit that is hard? If you don't know how to move yourself through these things, you need to learn to coach yourself. This is what I'm going to be teaching through the self-coaching framework, which is based in cognitive behavior therapy in a format that doesn't require counseling skill and in an intersectional coaching framework, which will allow us to uniquely use self-coaching in the context of the non-diet approach. You're going to learn to apply self-coaching to you, and you can do it either with your relationship to food, body, or business. It's irrelevant the circumstance, you learn it through, and then you're going to naturally, easily, seamlessly be able to use it with your client, not because you know it intellectually, but because you've embodied it, and that's how you move yourself through success. So at the time that I'm recording this, we're just opening the door. I have 25 seats in that course that I'm going to be giving through September and October, I don't know how many there's left by the time you're listening to that. Hopefully, I'm, I've am i put a large number of seats and hope that I can fulfill everybody's needs. So hopefully there are still seats available. The date, the dead end of the registration is September the 8th. And we spend a full day together on September the 9th. And then after that, we meet twice weekly to coach you through the application of self-coaching. And I say we because it's me and my team. You're going to be exposed to different styles of coaching to help you learn faster so you can create more result in your life and then pass that on to your client. So I'm going to move the podcast now to a Instagram live that I did. So this is a recording of a live that I did on how to learn to create more result for your client for the rest of the podcast. So hopefully I'll see you either in the next episode or inside of the Non-Diet Coach Lab and my team will process the recording of the live on how to create more result with your client. My number one advice to be a better non-diet coach for your client is this one. You all ready? Be your number one client. Become your number one client. Coach yourself to the result that you want to experience in your life. Because that's what you do for your client, right? You coach them to create the result they don't have yet in their life. So if you are an eating coach in any format, dietitian, nutritionist, intuitive eating coach, what you do, your client has a problem with eating or with food and they want to resolve it. They want to experience a different 
result when it comes to eating and food, and they are paying you to help them create a different result with food and eating, right? That's what you do. You help them create a different result. So help yourself, coach yourself, learn to coach yourself to different result in your own life. Learn, practice coaching your own brain. That's how you're going to get better at coaching other human being. I could end my broadcast right here, but we're going to go further than this. It's actually lesson one of our non-diet coach training. And I'm literally following the workbook in this broadcast here and sharing some insight on how we coach coaches to coach. That's a lot of coaching word. But I'm taking you through this lesson. This lesson is titled Being Your Number One Client. And for those of you who are new to my world, the tool or the coaching framework we use, so the coaching framework that I use with my client, no matter which client they are, that they are a professional or just a regular woman wanting different results in her life, we use a model that is based into cognitive behavior therapy combined with a somatic trauma-informed approach. It's a variation of what some of you call the self-coaching model, which is a very popular coaching framework. And we use that because it helps both at the cognitive level and at the emotional somatic level. So that's a bit of a technical background to our coaching framework, but it goes as follows. In a very simple way, we look at our thoughts, our belief system, and we investigate what kind of feelings, what kind of emotion they're creating in our life and how our emotion impact our action, our behavior, our habit, and then the result we get from those behavior. Because no matter what result you're looking at in your life, that it is with food, with body image, with your business, it is created from the action you're taking in the regards to this goal. But here's the caveat. Most people coach at the action or behavior level. And then they say, well, this is all the things you need to do and all the things you're not doing, go out and do those things. The problem with that is we can't, we can rely on willpower and we've all experienced willpower through our years of trying to control food. We can use willpower in order to control ourselves into a new behavior, a new action, but that works until it doesn't. Because we all, all human being, run out of willpower in quote-unquote self-discipline at some point. The question is, when is that going to be for you? Other approach to coaching is foregoing the action level and going at the thought and the belief level so we can feel different. And then from a place of feeling different, we will naturally take different action that will likely be more productive in the direction of our goal, right? So you have to go in and examine the way you're thinking about a circumstance in your life. How does that make you feel and what kind of action you take when you feel this way? And in order for you to create your goal, the things you want in your life you need to think differently, feel differently, and that will produce more productive action towards your goal. That is in five minutes, the coaching framework that I'm teaching to all the people that I work with. Now, the, the, the next level up is you learning to do that on yourself, which is what I teach my 
clients, my general population clients, I teach them how to do that on themselves. You as a coach have to learn to do this on yourself and then do it on other people. But here's where most coaches approach this in the first place. They're like, oh no, just show me the coaching framework. I'll go out and do it for people without doing it on myself first. So you're going to come to a coaching session with a messy, messy, messy brain and you think you will be able to coach other people. And that gives terrible results. It gives you terrible result as a coach. You're feeling anxious. You're feeling not good enough. You're feeling that you're harming people because you're messy in your own brain. And then you come and you say, no, 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 no. I can help you, right? I saw a quote before going live here that says, it was a business coach who was saying, an unhealed CEO cannot create a business to heal other people. And that's 100% alignment with my business. If you have a messy brain, if you have a lack of self-belief, how in the hell do you think you're going to be able to help other people? It's not going to work. Because you're going to drag them into the same level of belief as the one you are experiencing in your life. This is why you have to become your number one client. You have to work on managing your own brain so you can create your own result that you want in your life and then come to the coaching relationship from that place of confidence, from that place of feeling good enough and knowing how to create beliefs and result in your own life. So then you will be able to help other people very efficiently, very quickly, and very profoundly. That's why I say be your number one client. Now, you don't have, so I'm broadcasting this on like social media platform. There's people from all kinds of background listening to me. Perhaps you're listening to this on my podcast. Maybe you have a different coaching framework. Totally okay. Whatever your coaching framework is, live it. Embody it to the tip of your finger in your own life. And then go out and share it with your client. Bring them in this embodiment of your particular coaching framework and show it to them. Coach it to them from a place of living it from a place of being it. I have a, a podcast episode in the Undiet Your Coaching podcast called Be the Product of Your Product. As coaches, what we sell is us. Our, you know, in business, they often talk about business assets, right? So if you're, I don't know, I'm holding a water bottle in my hand right now. So if you're a manufacturer of water bottle made of stainless steel, probably your number one asset is your patent or your plan, your engineering model for your particular shape of water bottle and your capacity to get stainless steel to make that water bottle. These are probably your two most important assets in your business. As a coach who coach at the thought and the belief level, your number one asset is your own brain. So your number one asset is your own brain. So learn to coach your own brain. So when you encounter a client that has resistance or thinking about a particular circumstance in their life, let's say their body image, they're thinking about their body in a way that's creating a lot of shame and a lot of struggle 
you will know what needs to be done, what kind of thinking they needs to adopt to stop creating shame and creating, I teach body neutrality, neutrality when it comes to their body. That's what I mean by being your number one client. Now, I want to highlight something here in the way that we teach coaching. We teach it not only from a cognitive behavior, like from the brain, but we coach it also from, and I'm like putting my hands on my heart right now, we coach it from an embodiment and a somatic experience. Our, our brain offers us thoughts about any circumstance in our life, not because our brain is broken or Unfortunately, I hear this too often. My brain is an asshole. Yeah, there's some people out there teaching that your brain is an asshole. That's why you're having these thoughts. I'm like, no, 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 no. Your brain is offering you these thoughts that are counterproductive to your goal because it brings you safety. So if you take two things away from this, conversation today be your number one client practice coaching yourself and become an expert at coaching your own brain and then two have compassion for the resistance and the unproductive thoughts your brain is offering you because that's the way for your brain to keep you safe it may not make sense in the direction of your goal, but right now where you at, your brain believes that that is the safest thing you can think. So I'm gonna give you here some ways of approaching your current thoughts that you're trying to coach yourself so that you can see how this is making you safe. You ready? Here's my favorite one. When you identify a thought that is not making you feel in a way that is in alignment with your goal, I want you to insert the thought in this sentence. It makes total sense that my brain thinks blah, 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 because and then figuring out how it makes sense because fill the blank. So for an example, we'll go to body image because that's typically the number one area where coaches need some help. So that if that's you and you need help helping your client with body image, we'll fill in the blank using a very popular thought that we hear from our client. It makes total sense that my brain thinks that being fat is terrible because I live in a fat phobic society, right? Our thoughts, we learn to think thoughts like fat is terrible from what we're exposed to. So here's some areas where we learn our thinking, social conditioning, system of oppression, family, right? A lot of our beliefs, lots of our beliefs are learned from our families of origin. I was just coaching, give you this example in a completely different area, which is money mindset. I was just coaching in the non-diet mentorship program, someone around money. And we were looking at our thoughts about making money in our business. And it was all thoughts like you got to put in a lot of hard work. Money is hard to make money doesn't grow on tree. It was all thoughts that her mom and her dad had repeated hundreds of times when she was young. So today she's 30 years old and she has these thoughts playing in the background of her brain every time she's trying to set a money goal. Which ha What happens and the result of that is that she gets discouraged of chasing a money goal because it has to be so hard and so much work and it's not easy. And if she literally has to burn herself out in order to make money. Why? 
Because it makes total sense she wouldn't think that because she was raised for 20 plus years in a family that believed that money was hard to make. Makes total sense. Nothing's gone wrong here. She just kept believing how she was raised. The same thing as our body image. Our clients believe that fat is terrible because that's at every corner. That's what society is telling them. Being fat is terrible. You will have a terrible life. You'll never be happy. You'll never be healthy. All the terribleness will happen to you if you're fat. They hear that on movies. They hear that in magazines, in books, and everywhere they go. <laughs> right? So is it surprising that that's the thought they're operating from? No. Bring compassion. It's not your fault. Nothing's gone wrong. Now, here's what we need to do. You can keep thinking this thought, totally your choice. If you keep thinking this thought, then you will keep having to feel shame and disgust, and you'll have to go on a diet, lose weight, gain weight for the rest of your life. Is that how you want to live your life? Is that the next 20, 30, 40 years of your life, is that how you want to live it? And some people answer yes. Good. Go live your life the way you think is the best way for you. But I have a feeling that if you're here, you're listening to this, is because you have clients who said, no, I don't want to live this life anymore. Just like my coaching client earlier, she didn't want to make money and have to burn herself out in order to make money. So now you want a different result. Great. The way to a different result is for you to think different thoughts, to change your belief system about money, to change your belief system about body image, to change your belief system about coaching. Wherever where you want to have a different result, you're going to have to change your belief and your thinking. You as a coach need to know how to do that for yourself in your life so you can coach your client to do the same thing. And the way to do that, you can do it by contorting yourself, by using willpower, or you can do it from a place of compassion. It totally makes sense that I would think that now, today, moving forward, I'm deciding that I'm not going to believe that anymore. And now I'm going to believe something different. And again, you can do it from a place of being an asshole to yourself, being tough on yourself, or you can use this journey of creating a new goal, of creating a new result, changing your body image, making more money, coaching client by being kind and compassionate to yourself. In my experience of coaching people over the last 10 years, I've done it both way. The first probably five years or four or five years, I did it the diet culture way, being an asshole to myself, using willpower and self-discipline. And then I've used it from having a different relationship to myself, which is, it's not my fault. Nothing has gone wrong. We're just going to take a different approach going forward. I have a lot of compassion and a lot of love for myself. I can tell you from having done both, that second option, the one that I've been living through for the last five years, is so much nicer. <laughs> and it's so much easier a lot of my healing personally that I was pursuing in the past had a lot to do with stress. And it's because I spent 25 years in the corporate world, no, 15 years in the corporate world, pursuing goals for the corporation and for myself by being an asshole to myself by using willpower and beating the shit out of myself into having a different behavior, by literal fear. In the last five years, I've learned to do it from a somatic place, from a compassion, from a love, and my life has completely changed. 
because I'm, I'm not beating myself all the time. I'm not criticizing myself. I stop being hypervigilant. My nervous system is regulated. My adrenals are doing better, <laughs> much better because I'm not being an asshole for myself. I'm looking into my thoughts. I'm figuring out where they're coming from. I'm having full empowerment to keep them or to change them. And with consent, I'm moving forward towards different goal in my life. Somebody asked me in that same coaching session earlier today, should they constantly have new goals? And that was a coach asking me that. The answer is totally up to you. What often happens is that we enter the pursuit of goal one after the other from a place of not good enough. Actually, I'm hoping this person is listening to this because I just came up with a new answer as I'm saying this. If the pursuit of the goal one after the other is from a place of trying to feel good enough or feel better about yourself, you will definitely burn out. But you entering the constant evolution and challenging yourself from a place of fun, from a place of challenging yourself, from a place of love, from curiosity for what you're capable of, then the pursuit of goals one after the other will not exhaust you and it will not hurt you because it's actually a fun experience. And for you, if that's you as a coach, the way to do that is to decondition your brain, being your number one client, about what goals mean to you. All of us listening to this have been conditioned to social construct that pursuing a goal was to make us feel better. Pursuing a goal can also be about having pleasure and having fun. It's how you think about it. So this is where your own coaching, your own brain comes in. Practice thinking differently about what a goal means and why you're pursuing the goal. So I'm going to wrap this up. My number one advice for you to be a better coach with your client is to be your number one client, is to learn to practice coaching through your own brain and getting yourself to achieve different result in your own life by coaching yourself using your coaching framework and being the expert at creating new result in your own life. And from there, you become a 10x potential coach for your client because you are coming to the coaching relationship with a brain that is clean, crisp, and on edge. Not an edgy in the, in the non-productive way, but on edge because your brain is thinking very productively because you're constantly coaching yourself in your own brain. That's how you become a better coach for your client. I have a few podcasts on this topic on diet you're coaching. Go find the feed. We have about 50 episodes by this day, 2022. And I can think of one podcast that would be helpful to continue this. It's called How to Be a Confident Coach. And I think it's in the around podcast 18 or 19 on our feed. So that will help you take this learning to the next step. Have a great day. Ready to shed diet culture from your practice and help more clients do the same? Awesome. We've got free resources to get you started. Simply go to stephaniedozier.com forward slash pro series, all in one word, and access our three free training classes that are currently available. We also have a free PDF guide to intuitive eating and article about the non-diet approach. We also offer a variety of paid programs throughout the year to support you in your journey to undiet your coaching practice. Join us at stephaniedoze.com forward slash pro series, and I'll see you on the other side.